Hey folks, I'm back and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the game Pest. So I recently did an unboxing and I've got it all set up to play my first game because I've uh, I've finished painting the miniatures. <laughs> and I'll tell you a little trick. Uh, anytime I get a game and it doesn't have a lot of miniatures and I think I might want to paint them, I paint them first and then I try to play the game. <laughs> I find sometimes if I play the game and maybe I didn't have a great time either because I didn't learn the rules well enough or the game just wasn't very good or the company wasn't very good. When those things pop up, they can they can push uh, these miniature projects like on down the line. And there's a couple of things I definitely needed to do with this one. So Pest is a game with these, uh, these plague doctors and they're going around the city and they're fixing things up. They're they're, uh, they're curing people, they're building buildings, and then doing all this other stuff. And one thing that they can do is improve the capital city. They can add buildings and create things inside the capital. They also contribute people to the capital. And so uh, there's this little centerpiece that was created. If you saw my unboxing, I kinda, it, it was an accessory. It was a, an expansion, if you will. And in the Kickstarter campaign, it was sort of prominently featured. It was a really interesting part of this, this kind of cityscape right in the middle of this enormous board. And I do mean it's enormous. I'm set up on a four foot by four foot table and I've barely got room for maybe, I guess without the camera and stuff, I could probably fit in three or four people, but just barely. So right in the middle of this table is the cityscape. And in the Kickstarter campaign, it looked really neat. It was definitely something I wanted to get. So I bought it uh, and it came in all these little pieces uh, it was meant to kind of push fit into these little notches and stuff. I didn't find that those push fits worked too well. Like it was a little, it was very fiddly as far as like, could you get it in there or not? And it was just as easy to knock things over, especially these little thin buildings and stuff. Because a couple of these little towers have very narrow bases. The other thing is the cityscape would never fit together properly. It came in all these pieces for some reason. I'm not sure why they didn't just make that disc like all one piece. Maybe they made it so that... Uh, if, if those people weren't playing, you could take those out or something like that and have a, a smaller piece. But it only really made sense to kind of uh, put it all together. So that's what I did. I started by trimming out some of the plastic that, uh, that you'll see. that It was made to kind of notch in with those, but I, I reduced those quite a bit. So I'd have some room for glue so I could glue it together. The other thing I did was kind of rough up a lot of the sides. So I'd take X-Acto blades and kind of cut into the sides of a, a little bit. So there'd be something... Something for it to grab onto if I put some glue in there and mash two of those things together. Otherwise, it's just these little thin, slick pieces of plastic and there's nothing really to grab onto. So as I was gluing this together, I decided to spray it with an adhesive accelerant. You can super glue something, you can spray it with this uh, accelerant and it'll just instantly be dry. So it's, it's one way to kind of quickly move through this. And I knew that I was going to be in there filling up a bunch of gaps and other stuff too. So I didn't worry too much about it. Uh, but I went through and I attached the whole bottom part. So green stuff comes in this ribbon of yellow and blue epoxy putty. And what you do is you, you cut off a portion of that. You need the yellow and blue between your fingers. And you get it until it turns like a green consistency. And then you can shove it into cracks and fill in holes and stuff. And it dries just like hard as a rock. It's uh, really, really sticky. And can be difficult to deal with. So I recommend if you do use green stuff, get a little wet paper towel and set it there. And use, use that on your tools, use it on your fingers and stuff. That'll make working with that a whole lot more pleasant. And it lets you smooth out areas a whole lot easier. The other thing I wanted to do is, if you remember, I tested out all the little places where you put the player flags. And some of those little uh, areas were a little compressed. It was a little melty in there. And so I decided to take a lighter and one of my sculpting tools and use it to kind of widen up some of the gaps. I do believe I've got all of them to where they're uh, somewhat accessible. I doubt I'll ever play this at five players. Like just looking at the table right now, I could be wrong, but I think it'll be only maybe if I manage to take this out to the game club or something, will I ever play this at a full five player count. That being said, I did want this thing to be as perfect as possible. So I did give the little heated pry bar treatment to each of the little slots on there. So as I puttied things up, I decided that uh, maybe the best way for those buildings to kind of quickly stick to the uh, base was to use magnets. So I've uh, embedded magnets in with the green stuff. It's something that I used to do a lot in Warhammer 40k and, and I guess some other games too. So I embedded the green stuff with the magnets. I did drill into it maybe just a little bit to give me a little bit more depth. 
uh, because it was very shallow, the little areas that the buildings fit in. And some of them they stuck up just a little bit, but I tried just to not worry about that. <laughs> all the buildings too were hollow, so it made it really easy to embed magnets in, inside of all of, the, all of them along with some green stuff. For the most part, I did all of these on the same polarity, but I, I did uh, mispolarize one of them, the biggest one, so it only fits in its spot. <laughs> Which is kind of cool too. I guess uh, it it makes sure that that spot's dedicated to the biggest tower. And after that, it was time to paint it. Uh, I kept it a real simple, uh, grim dark paint scheme, sort of like the game itself. And I uh, used mainly contrast paints. I did use some regular acrylic paints and other stuff too. Here's a little bit of a fast forward to see what all I did. <laughs>
I painted the buildings, I painted up the Plague Doctors themselves. There are only five of these characters, so it was really easy to kind of just spend a couple of nights uh, painting these up. I tried to keep the color theme for these, uh, again, kind of dark, muted colors. Uh, but I did want to, there to be a little bit of a variety in the different Plague Doctors. So some of them have different colored masks and some of them have uh, you know different colored clothing and pants and shoes and stuff. One thing I did want to keep consistent across all of them though was their hat. So when you see that big black cap, I mean aside from the mask like the bird mask, <laughs> when you see one of those black caps you know that uh, they're an official plague doctor and they're coming for you. <laughs> there wasn't anything particularly amazing about these models. They, they were fun to paint and, and they're pretty decent models. Uh, as it were, but really there wasn't very many of them. The detail on them on, seemed fine, seemed pretty good. I do enjoy having them all painted up. It really takes the tear up a notch, and it's, there's just five of them, so there's really no reason. So but between the five of them and then the city, if you got it, that's all you got to paint on this one. They're good to go. So now all I got left is to play the game. Hopefully Owen and I will be breaking into this next Monday. I'm not sure if we will or not. We might do like a first impressions video or something like that for it. Uh, hopefully I'll get a full review for this before too long, but I would like to play it a few times and it's quite a big game to pull out and finding people that I want to play it with me too, I think might be kind of difficult because <laughs> it looks pretty intimidating just out here on the board. I think it's going to be fine. I, I, it seems simple enough. Uh, I'm dying to dig into it. I've already read the rules like twice. We'll see what that's worth. But uh, next on the paint table is Robinson Crusoe. Uh, I'm having fun painting those really, really good quality miniatures on those things, and uh, I look forward to showing them to you. That's all I got for you right now. Until next time, enjoy your games, and I'll see you soon.